Hey guys, Mark Cassara here, financial strategist and money coach, and I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to jump into this uh, mini course about life insurance. There's lots of voices out there, lots of people on TikTok, lots of self-proclaimed gurus that think they know everything about it when really they're giving some misinformation out there. And so what I wanted to do is clear the air and give you some valid, valuable information information that you can use and you can go ahead and share that with the rest of your family, friends and community. Uh, this is going to give you the knowledge and the know-how in order to choose the right, uh, your, the right insurance for yourself. So this mini course is called what life, which life insurance is right for you. Okay. And hopefully by the end of this, uh, mini presentation, this mini course, You'll be more educated and more well-balanced in your understanding about life insurance that you'll be able to make a educated decision on which policy could be the best fit for you or your family or your loved ones, okay? This is a beginner's guide. So have you ever been asked the question, what is this type of life insurance? What is that type of life insurance? And you didn't, you didn't really know the answer or you heard something on TikTok and then you went down the rabbit hole trying to look for the answers and you got very even more confused because there are so many different answers out there. Well, let's just break it down, guys. What is life insurance in general? What is this thing called life insurance that we hear all over TikTok? Life insurance is simply a contract that protects an individual or entity, even businesses can have this type of life insurance, by providing them financial compensa compensation in the event of losses due to untoward incidents. Okay, when something happens, a person passes away, a business goes on there, there is some type of insurance there that can bring in financial compensation to take care of the other underlying needs, whether that's medical or whether that's uh, paying off debt or whether that's buying another individual out of a business. Uh, there's lots of different types of insurance. We're going to go into the first type of insurance, okay? Term insurance. Term insurance is a straightforward and cost-effective life insurance option that provides a high death benefit for a specified term. That's where we get the word term from termination period. At the end of that 30-year period, you're policy terminates and you'll have to look for a new policy. Now, depending on how old you are, it could be a lot harder getting insurance at that point. Okay, let's continue on. It offers financial protection to beneficiaries in case of policyholders death during that particular term. While it lacks cash value and permanence, like a permanent policy does, term insurance is flexible, transparent, suitable for covering temporary financial responsibilities. Think of it like if you had a mortgage, you would want to get a 30-year term just to cover your mortgage. In the event that you passed away, you'd want to make sure your mortgage was paid off. If your kids were going to college, you wanted to make sure they were covered. You'd probably look at a 10-year term just to make sure that things were covered in the event that something happened, your family would be taken care of. If you had any type of long-term liabilities. You want to make sure you have something in place to take care of those liabilities in the event of your passing. Let's look at some of the pros and cons of term insurance. Let's look at the pros first, okay? It's affordable. It's probably the cheapest form of life insurance that you can get with the highest amount of death benefits. That's definitely a perk. It's very simple, straightforward. There are not a lot of mechanics involved in a term policy. You set your monthly budget and that determines how much your death benefits are, are going to be. Or you set your death benefits and that determines how much your monthly premiums are going to be. Okay. Um, it, is, it is very flexible. In some instances, you can convert a term policy into a permanent policy. If you have a conver conversion rider built in, so you'll have to ask your agent if you have policy with you right now, you have to ask your agent, do I have a conversion rider and can I convert this term into a permanent policy? If you do, you're in luck because what it will do is pretty much guarantee insurability. You won't have to go through any type of hoops to get this permanent policy on yourself, no medical requirements, you're, you're pretty much grandfathered in, okay? And uh, there's no cash value risk, so you don't risk Getting, you know, keeping your money somewhere where, you know, it, it may not grow as fast as you thought it would grow. Okay. We'll talk about that in a minute. And there's a short term focus. So you don't necessarily have to pay for the rest of your life. Okay. It's just 10 years, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. That's usually the terms and it usually goes no more than 30 years. Okay. Let's look at the cons. Unfortunately, there's no cash value. So the money that you're paying into that policy, once that policy expires, it's it's over. You don't get that money back. Um, it's limited uh, limited duration, right? So it's only set for a period of time. After 
10 to 30 years, you'll have to find new insurance. Now, during that time, you may have some health conditions that arise. It may be hard or near impossible to get another policy later on uh, in your later years. There could be increasing premiums, okay? Increasing premiums, especially after your designated time frame. If you have a 10-year term policy and you wait until the 11th year, you'll notice that your your 80, 50, 60, 20 dollar premium is going to double or triple on the 11th year, okay? Because it was only set up for that many years. After 30 years, if you have a 30 year term, there people see this all the time. They say, "Oh, my policy is going to jump from $100 a month to $800 a month." That's very, very normal because it's it's renewable, but it goes up over time. So basically, the life insurance company just guarantees you that your premiums aren't going to go up for that period of time, and if you wait too long and your policy is about to expire, you're pretty much out of luck. You're either going to have to pay the higher premiums or you're going to have to cancel that policy and look for something else. Now, there are other types of policies, annual, renewable, um, which we don't really recommend because it starts off really low and then every single year incrementally it goes up. I don't write those policies because I never want to put my clients in a position where they're going to have to pay more than they're paying right now 10 years down the road because of for whatever reason because we got them into an a, a annual renewable policy okay there's some agents out there that'll put you in an annual renewable policy because it's the cheapest they can get you a good amount of death benefits for pennies on the dollar but it's not worth it in the long run because your premiums will go up and up and up every single year afterwards okay there's no return in premiums. You can't get any of that premium back. Uh, there's no permanent coverage. Again, it's very limited. You only have it for a certain amount of time. And, you know, the cost over time definitely gets more expensive. Let's talk about ROP. This is another type of term policy. However, there are some additional benefits inside of this. ROP is simply this, return of premium. It's a term insurance policy, and it's a type of term policy that refunds your premiums paid into the policy after your term is over. Essentially, after your 10, uh, 15, 20, 25, or 30 year term is over, you get a refund for all of that premium you paid into it. Now, I actually like ROP. It's good for many people. It's like a forced savings account. You cannot access that money and take loans from it like you can permanent policies, which we'll get into shortly, but it's like a forced savings account. It's like putting money away for a rainy day, and then when that policy is over, you end up getting that money back. Now, you can get a term policy on a young kid, 18 years old, maybe a good option if they just want to stack some money away, and then later on down the road when they're in their 30s, they get a big lump sum back. That may be a good option for them. Okay, It combines the death benefit of traditional insurance with a return of premium if the insured serves, uh, survives the policy term, offering uh, a financial safety net and a potential savings component. Let's look at some of the pros. Combined death benefits with return premium, definitely a pro. Financial safety net, definitely a pro. You got something to look forward to later on. Now, that's if you don't pass away during that time. If you pass away, obviously, you don't get that term back, but your family will get those benefits, okay? So it does benefit them as well. And a potential savings component. Some of the cons are higher premiums. An average term policy is probably going to be double or triple what a, uh, uh, an average ROP policy is probably going to be double what a traditional term policy is. If you're paying $30 a month or $40 a month for you know $500,000 in coverage for a term, your ROP is probably going to be around $100 per month. Okay. Now, again, it depends on a variety of things, but just that's, you know, estimated what, what it would look like. Okay. It's temporary coverage. Some of the cons, temporary coverage, um, opportunity cost, right? So opportunity cost is, you know, you're paying into this policy, although you get some of that money back, it's really not growing. It's not growing. They're just, they're just holding your premiums until the day that you need that money back and they're going to give you that money back. It's not like it's going to compound for you and actually grow. Okay. And uh, again, that's where that is. No compounding. Okay. That's ROP. Now let's look at permanent life insurance. Okay. The first two we talked about were temporary life insurance. They were term policies that had a termination period. 
This slide I want to talk about permanent policies. There are a multitude of permanent policies, okay? Uh, permanent insurance is a lifelong life insurance coverage that offers a death benefit along with a savings or cash value component. It provides financial protection throughout one's lifetime, accumulates cash value over time, and may offer options like whole life or universal life, allowing flexibility in the premium, premiums and the benefits. Let's check out whole life. Many of you have heard about whole life. Whole life has been around for decades. Our parents used to have whole life. You probably even had a Gerber policy taken out on you when you were a kid. That's a whole life policy. It's like the grandfather of insurance. Okay, It, it guarantees you a low fixed rate of return, and it does not fluctuate. Okay, It's very rigid. It's stationary. You get 2% guarantee, and then you get an option for some dividends. Those dividends could add up to an additional one to two percent and you could essentially net four to five percent in those policies okay the guarantees over the years have actually gone down they went from four percent to two percent over the last few years okay whole life insurance is a type of permanent life insurance that provides coverage for an entire lifetime of the policyholder it combines the death benefit with the cash value component that grows over time premiums remain consistent the policyholder may receive dividends or have an option to borrow against the cash value. This type of insurance is good for guarantees and it's a low fixed rate of return. I would say if you just want a consistent growth, similar to that of a CD, put, your, put, your, put yourself some money into a whole life policy. Uh, it's not flexible, so you have to commit to whatever you decide to start your premiums at. You can overfund it eventually, but it's not very flexible. In other words, you can't add to it later on or take away from it later on. It's pretty much set in stone. Okay, There are some riders that you can put on to give it flexibility, but that just incurs more cost. I'd say if you had a lump sum up front that you needed immediate access to, this is what we call IBC, infinite banking concept. You can put a large lump sum into a whole life policy and within the first 15 to 30 days, take out 80 to 90% of that lump sum and go and use it for other opportunities, okay? That's what we call becoming your own bank, infinite banking, okay? Privatized banking, I'm sure you've heard it all over TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. These are the types of policies that a lot of people set up to use to become their own bank. Now, with that being said, it's not a one size fit all and it could be a very complicated process and you need to make sure that you can fund it properly or else the policy has the risk factor that it could potentially lapse on you if you're not funding it properly. So again, sit with a financial strategist that knows what they're talking about uh, and that can lead you the right way and explain everything to you and make sure you are fully, fully competent of what you're getting into before you sign those documents, okay? Universal life. Universal life been around since the 70s. Uh, it is the evolution of whole life. It's more it's a more flexible option, and it gives you a higher interest rate return. Okay, universal life insurance is a type of permanent life insurance offering flexibility in premium payments and death benefits. You can increase your premiums or death benefits each year. You can also decrease them each year. Each carrier is differently. Uh, each carrier has different set of rules, but you can increase or decrease decrease your premiums and your death benefits per your needs. Okay. For instance, if you uh, get a policy and you have $250,000 in there and you're paying hundred dollars per month and next year you have a child and you want to increase that death benefit by 25%, you can go ahead and call the carrier and they can increase that death benefit. If you wanted to, you can also increase your premium paid into that policy to stuff a little extra money away. It combines death benefits with cash value component, allowing policyholders to adjust coverage, premiums, and invest the cash value. It offers potential for higher returns, but also carries investment risk. Now, this is a little bit of a debate. Universal insurance does not directly invest your money into the market. There is one type of universal insurance. It's called variable universal insurance. And if you notice, I didn't even put it up on this screen. We don't deal with it. It's a crummy product and it definitely risks the client's money. In a variable product, 
You'll put money in, you'll have a money manager, they'll invest it straight into the market, but it'll still have death benefits attached to it. But the downside is you risk that money, you could potentially lose all of that money, and it'll eat away into your policy. So that's why we don't even talk about it much. Universal doesn't take that money or invest it in the market, okay? So it, it functions on a different set of rules. Universal insurance has some protection in there from loss, okay? So just make sure you're very clear on that type of insurance. If somebody recommends a VUL, variable universal insurance, run the other way. Index universal insurance is one of my favorite, and not just because I'm an insurance broker, but because I'm a practitioner. I was in policies before I even got into the life insurance industry for my entire family. Myself, my wife, all six of my kids, and my grandbaby all have IUL policies. Now, an IUL policy is a type of Permanent life insurance offering flexibility in premium payments and death benefits. It combines a death benefit with cash value component, allowing policyholders to adjust coverage premiums and invest the cash value. It offers potential for higher returns, but also carries investment risk. Now, I will also caution you about this. Index Universal Life Insurance does not invest your money directly. Therefore, we do not consider it an investment. So be very clear about that. When you hear gurus or you read nonsense on the internet talking about how risky index universal is and universal is, they think that that money is directly invested into these indices, which it's not. So I want to be very clear about that. The carriers keep your money in a reserve. They use a strategy called indexing. Whatever the market yields, that's what they're going to give your account but your money is never directly invested in the market. We have some more advanced trainings that goes into how it really works, but just be clear. IULs do not take your money and invest it directly in the market. It actually sits safe and secure in a reserve, earning interest. They take the interest and then they put that interest in the market, but it's not putting your individual money in the market. They have higher earning potentials because they are fluctuation, uh, they fluctuate based on market performance. IUL policies usually track the S&P 500, the Credit Suisse, the Pace Setter, the Barclays, the NASDAQ. There's several different companies that use several different indices. That's where you'll get 8 to 10% returns, 6 to 8% returns. It's not going to be like your traditional whole life that only gives you a very low 2 to 4% return consistently. The downside to the IUL is you may not earn interest during the down periods of the market. If the market crashes, you may not earn interest. But that's okay for me because I'd rather not earn interest than lose my money. See, inside of a life insurance policy, inside of an IUL, you have a 0% floor. Some of these carriers have a 1% floor, a 0.25% floor. Whatever it is, it does not allow you to lose your money. So your money is never at risk of being lost. Now, one of the things you need to be careful inside of an IUL is there's always going to be expense charges inside your policy. Just like there is in a whole life, just like there is in a universal life. So if you have 0%, but you still have expense charges, you're going to see your money maybe being eaten away by expense charges if it's not properly funded. That's why we always encourage our clients when they want an IUL to make sure they max contribute to it. They max fund it. If you're premiums are at $200, but you can max fund it up to $500, we recommend that you set it at something comfortable knowing that you're going to increase those premiums over time so that you get the benefits of that compound interest growth and tax-free income later on down the road. Protect your future with life insurance. Peace of mind in every policy. Couple different concepts that we use for life insurance, permanent policies, life insurance, right? So we have the whole life. We explained what that is. We have the IULs, index universal policies. I want to kind of just break that down for you so you really are clear on what all that looks like for you, okay? We went over what whole life is. Whole life is used in the IBC concept. We talked about that earlier, okay? Whole life is used in the infinite banking concept due to its ability to accumulate cash value, its stable premiums, its guaranteed death benefits, its potential for dividends and tax advantages. These feature make it very effective for individuals 
to create a personal banking system, allowing them to access funds through policy loans while maintaining financial stability and growth. Here's what I'll say about that. It talked about policy loans. That's a very important topic to cover. We cover that in some of our more advanced trainings. But for right now, a policy loan is simply just like you would go into a bank account and take a loan from the bank. You can go into your life insurance policy and take a loan from your policy. If you have cash value built up over time, you can go ahead and request a loan from the carrier for whatever cash value you have available in your policy. And you can go take that money and go use it for whatever you want. But your money is going to stay inside the policy earning compound interest. Now that happens both in a LERP and a IBC policy, both in a whole life and a index universal policy. You can borrow from both of them. Okay, uh, so that's important to know when it comes to IBC, you're not going to withdraw the money because that would create a tax consequence. You are going to loan against your money. Yes, there's an interest rate. Each carrier is different. Typically, it's between four and five percent. It could go all the way up to eight percent, but traditionally, it's a lot lower than your bank account. So it's a great way to leverage this money via the policy loan to arbitrage, get a higher net rate of return in another investment or project or whatever else you you put that money into and then pay your money back into the policy. You're making money in the policy and you're making money in that outside investment. You can do that in both types of policies. Now the LERP concept is more for long-term retirement. IBC's upfront, quick money. When you need it, it's there. LERP is more for retirement income. Yes, you can borrow money from your policies within the first few years, but you're not going to be able to access that money within the first 30 to 60 days. Typically within the first 12 months, policy loans are off limits. Gives it, it gives the account a little bit of time to grow, earn some additional interest. As you continue to put money in there, you'll be able to loan against whatever the surrender value is inside your policy. If you ever look at an illustration, you'll see account value and then you'll see surrender value. Account accumulation value and surrender value. Typically, the surrender value column is what is accessible to you during the time that the policy is growing in the very beginning, first 10 to 15 years. That's when most of the expense charges are, are charged in that policy. After about 10 to 15 years, a lot of those expense charges fall off. The policy ends up getting cheaper over time. There's a big myth out there that life insurance gets more expensive as you get older. Yes and no. Yes, it does because your mortality risk is a lot higher. However, the way that some of these policies are designed, especially in an IUL, is the more cash value you have inside your policy, the less the carrier charges you in insurance. If you have $250,000 in insurance in your death benefit portion, but you have $200,000 in your cash value, the carrier is going to say, Mr. Smith is self-insuring himself by $200,000. Therefore, we're only going to charge him for the difference, which is $50,000. So as your policy gets older and more cash values build up, the less the total cost of insurance will be inside your policy. The overall cost in an IUL policy should be around 1%, depending on if it's structured properly. Let me go ahead and read this LERP concept. The LERP, Life Insurance Retirement Plan concept, is using an index universal life insurance policy. It involves utilizing life insurance as a strategic tool for retirement planning. It combines the death benefit protection of a policy with the cash value growth potential of the IUL. Policyholders fund the IUL over a period of time, allowing the cash value to grow. In retirement, they can access the accumulated cash value tax-free via the loan option, providing a source of income while preserving tax advantages. The LERP concept aims to create a tax-efficient retirement strategy by leveraging the death benefits of, uh, by, by leveraging the benefits of life insurance and IUL. Okay, so when you are ready to take 
retirement income, you would take loans from your policy never to be paid back again. And the interest owed on that policy essentially just washes out because of the amount of growth that's taking place inside your policy. Again, if you want to know more about that, schedule a free consultation with one of us, my, either myself or my team members, and we'll definitely go ahead and help you with that. You can book a call at LegacyWealthCo.com forward slash strategy dash session. Uh, I hope this was a in-depth um, understanding of the different types of life insurance. I now want to chat with you briefly about the tax strategies that we use when it comes to life insurance policies. Number one, life insurance is not an investment. If anybody tells you it's an investment, please run the other way. Life insurance is not an investment, okay? There are certain sections of the IRS tax code that allow you to contribute money tax-free, Leverage that money via policy loans tax-free and then pass that money over to your beneficiary absolutely tax-free being or creating a very, very lucrative tax strategy for you and your, benef and your beneficiaries, okay? Section 101 of the IRS code says, and it basically deals with, uh, deals with tax-free death benefits from life insurance policies, okay? That's when your death benefits are passed to your beneficiary. They're not going to get taxed on any of that money, whether it's 100000 or $100 million. They will not get taxed on that money. Section 7702, it sets rules for life insurance contracts to qualify for tax advantages. Essentially, the, uh, the IRS looks at life insurance in this section and says, life insurance is not an investment. Therefore, we are not going to charge them capital gains or interest, uh, taxes on the interest earned, okay? This 7702 is what sets life insurance apart from other investments. And then Section 72 governs the taxation of annuity contracts, including withdrawals and payments. And finally, 7702A addresses tax treatment of modified endowment contracts, which have different tax implications. You do not want your policy to turn into a modified endowment contract or an endowment contract, okay? That essentially is an investment account and you will owe taxes on that. So when you sit with a professional, they're always going to bring your attention to the mech. Hey, Mr. Smith, make sure we're not going over that mech. Now your policy may be set at $200 a month, but you can go all the way up to $1,000 per month to to max contribute to your policy. But if you go over that thousand dollars per month, you're going to create a mech. It's going to become a modified endowment contract. That's why we always tell you max fund up to the limit, but do not go over that. If you have extra money that you need to put inside of a policy, especially an IUL, you can go ahead and set up a second account or an account for your kids or account for your wife and spread your finances out that way. Okay. Make sure you sit with a tax accountant, CPA that knows what they're doing when it comes to these tax laws as well, so that they can go ahead and guide you through that process. Guys, I appreciate you taking the time to spend with me during this mini course. I hope it was valuable for you. I hope you learned a lot. Make sure you do me a couple favors. Sign up and get a free strategy call with us. You can text that number right there. Go to that website or go to LegacyWealthCo.com forward slash strategy dash session to book a free strategy call. Also, go on social media and let people know that you just went through a free masterclass and it completely broke down all of the ins and outs of life insurance. Now, we can get very advanced and we can go in the weeds and we can talk for hours about the different in intricacies of all these different policies. But that's what a free financial consultation is all about. I appreciate your time. I value you. I look forward to working with you. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day.